Hi, my salty pecans. Oh. <laughs> and welcome back to my channel if you're new here. Hi, my name is Pamela. And on today's video, I am actually doing my Hoya Carnosa Compacta collection. It's really small. It's going to be a quick video, but I do want to share with you all my lovely Hoya Carnosa Compacta collection. I'm obsessed with the entire Hoya Carnosa Compacta. Just everything about it, the foliage, just the look, how crunchy it is, the smell of the, the flowers, like, mm, get you, get you some. If you're not into them, you better get into it before it's too late, okay? So if you're interested in seeing my Carnosa Compacta collection, <laughs> then keep on watching. <laughs> So welcome back everyone let's just get right into it i'm going to show you all my very 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 first hoya carnosa compacta and it is this beauty right here i'm gonna try to get all of it in frame but this is my baby i absolutely love this one so much let me untangle you because sometimes on watering days we be tying you around knots and then forgetting to untie you oh I'm so sorry I'm so sorry my friend oh no okay all right all right all right all right all right so this is it this is my first compacta and I love it so much and yes this is a fern you know sometimes when you purchase plants and they have like a straggler a stray a hitchhiker plant in it well this is the hitchhiker plant for me and these plants they actually have been living really well with each other this plant has grown so much the fern itself has grown so much like since i've had it but the compacta is also growing a lot a lot of people say that these are really slow growers i don't pay attention too much to it so maybe they are slow growers maybe they're not but I think I have too many plants, honestly, to focus, like, oh, did the plant grow an inch this year? Did it grow two inch? Nah, like, are you happy? Are you full? Are you lush? Cool. That's all I'm worrying about. I'm not really, like, too pressed on, like, oh, it's a slow grower, X, Y, and Z. But that's because I am fortunate enough to have a larger plant. Alright, so the next compact that I actually purchased died. It was the Hoya Carnosa Compacta Vergata. It was a large, I think maybe like seven, eight inch pot. That plant, I have an entire series of like headaches and just sadness in regards to that plant. So I will link that series here, that playlist. Um, there's like a bunch of videos about just like the horrible things that happened. So then that entire plant died. It infested my windows with mealy bugs. I had to get mealy get rid of the mealybugs on like 20 something plants from one one freaking pot of plant I got mealybugs and thank god that's all gone I dealt with that when it needed to be dealt with so then I went and I actually spotted this beauty at I'm not sure if it was Home Depot or Lowe's but it was one of them and I believe yes, it was Lowe's. I spotted this one and I just had to get it. Like I'm like, oh my gosh, this is not something that you really see too 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 often. You see it, it's not a unicorn, but I needed it. I had that one. I needed it. I'm obsessed with the compactors. So this is this one. So then I'm like, oh, Oh, that, you know, I'm so sad because I lost my original variegated compacta. And those are harder to come across than the regular green. The variegated Hoya Carnosa compacta, not super, 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 you know, easy to come across. But you do come across them because they're not, like, rare, right? So, like I mentioned, sadly, my variegated compacta, that entire pot, like, gone dead it was sent to me with like root rot 
and mealy bugs like that plant was just destined not to survive i got like a box full of yellow leaves come on come on it was just such a horrible sale such a horrible sale it was my first facebook purchase like you know getting into the online plant community because i've been part of the plant community for a while but like the facebook online community it was just so sad so a very very kind lady she was so kind so 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 kind to go ahead and actually gift me this carnosa right here and it's grown so much for me since i've had it i think i have too many plants honestly to focus like oh did the plant grow an inch this year did it grow two inch now nah. it's just beautiful beautiful and the one that she did send me decided to push out also another vine and it's just an all white vine so i'm so happy about that I know the white vines, they're harder to maintain because they don't have chlorophyll, yada, yada, yada. I'm just enjoying the beauty of the plant. I'm not thinking about all the, what is the word, you know, all the, I'm not thinking about all, like, all that minor information. Literally, just enjoy the plant when you have it. Just enjoy it and try to keep it alive for as long as you can. That's all you have to do. And I also had a little mini one from a seller that, was just a fail it was just a fail the reason that I ended up getting that huge pot was because of this plant and it just it was, it was just so much going on so this is the variegated compacta very long story very long story but there's just not one variegated compacta no there is the regalis which is the white bordering and green inseria and there's also the Mauna Loa. I had to get the Mauna Loa. And this was actually acquired in two different states. And I mean like states, I mean like two different ways. So as you can see, there's like this buff, like huge lettuce -y, crunchy, right? A few right here. And then there's these little smaller runs right i actually acquired those via purchase i purchased you know i purchased them individually and i rooted them on my own and then like a couple of weeks later this one particular person was looking for a hoya that i had so i ended up trading them cuttings of that hoya rotunda flora for these two buff carnosa mandaloas and this plant has been growing so fast. This plant is a weed for me. This plant grows so fast. People say compactors are really slow growers. For me, again, like I said, I don't pay attention. But I do notice that things that weren't there when I originally had it are like humongous. It grows for me. So they might be slower growing. But because of how just the shape of the foliage, they're a bit more, you know, compacted then the growth might look slower than something that is probably just like long leaves and you know just like hanging like oh yeah you know i can see the growth you know i can see the growth but these it's harder to see the growth in these and another thing like with the compactas it's harder to see the growth because the internodes are so short the internodes you know between like the next two leaves like it's like two leaves two leaves two leaves right they're just so close together right that it doesn't look like the plant is growing but that's a really good thing because you want this to look compacted you want this to look bushy and full you don't want it to be like stringy um where you just have a whole bunch of like hanging leaves and then a huge like branch stem and then leaves and then another gap you don't want that so the Mauna Loa I had to have in my collection, so I'm happy to, you know, be able to create this fuller pot. Um, instead of spending like a whole bunch of money, I don't know how much money I would have probably spent to get this size pot. Especially with the uncommonness of this plant in general. Uh, so that is one tip. If you can trade, definitely trade with friends or strangers who you trust or you 
have like a proper relief so this is again like I mentioned the Mauna Loa the Mauna Loa has the white interior and the green bordering versus the regalis which has the white bordering and the green interior they both can go super variegated they both can you know have a little bit more green or they can just continue doing their variegation it doesn't matter the compactas are beautiful and you need them in your collection so i love compactas so much i have more <laughs> i have more compactas and they're all acquired different times okay i'm obsessed with them these are amazing and this compacta is really i love it because it's it's giving me that jody silver that I, I know I can't have the Jody Silver just yet, but like this one particular one right here is just so pretty. So pretty. Like, beautiful plant. Beautiful plant. They are just so resilient, so drought resistant. I neglect my compactas a lot. I will get into the care video. It, I will get into the care portion in a little bit, but I just want to show you all my compacta plants. So this one was sent to me um, via a Facebook um by a facebook and this was purchased a couple of like this whole thing was just purchased from amazon so the last compacta in my collection is actually not a compacta at all what i love about the hoya carnosa compactas is definitely the foliage i love how just luscious and crunchy and salady the foliage is how intertwined it's just i'm obsessed with it this is a beautiful beautiful plant beautiful plant right so what i love about the compacta like i mentioned is the foliage i discovered there's another hoya that looks very similar to the compacta but it's not it is the hoya you've seen the unboxing of this plant for me the hoya swiffer's tail the hoya rh022 and this is actually a hybrid this is a hybrid between the hoya motoski and the hoya fungi and it's actually created by rick Mo rick morir and it's named after his cat swiffer so you're like whoa pam that is a compacta no it's not a compacta because look compare the size of this is new growth okay this is literally four leaves okay four leaves in this one right here this is just two or th three two or three three that is the big difference the Swiffer's tail is like three times the size of the compacta, the foliage, but yet it still has the twisting, turning, winding sort of compacta crunchiness that I love. So I needed to have the Swiffer's tail in my collection. And again, this one is more of a collector's piece because it is not one that is like mass produced. You could find at like your local retailers. No, this is like a slow growing plant one. Two, it's not very common because it's a hybrid. It's not something that can be mass produced. Again, because it takes forever to grow. And then, you know, it's not very old. It's not a very old Hoya either way. Y'all, my lashes have been doing its own thing this whole entire video. But, yeah, that's pretty much it, everyone. So, I hope you enjoyed this Hoya carnosa compacta collection video if you have carnosas if you have compactas to be more specific in your collection let me know how many do you have i am in search of the last hoya carnosa compacta which is the jody silver if you have your hands on a jody silver and you're willing to sell me a cutting trade a cutting gift me a cutting please I just want to complete my collection. They're beautiful. The Jody Silver is like the prettiest thing I have ever seen. And I need it. And it's so hard to find because no one wants to sell. <laughs> no one wants to sell it. It's so slow growing also. So you're probably like, hey Pam, what are your care tips? I find that Carnosa Compactas, they actually are pretty drought resistant. They don't mind drying out. 
like with most Hoyas, they don't like their, you know, their substrate to stay wet for a really long time. So if you want, what you can do is actually keep it in the grower's medium. I believe this is just like straight up peat moss from uh, Costa Farms. But the ones that I personally receive in the mail, I create my own substrate mix, which is a little bit more well draining. It's full of just like orchid bark. I have some perlite. I also have um, this like a, you know, it, it's well draining, but you do have to make sure, you know, you water it, but it can withstand not getting watered. And I do find that when I push it on that, like I'm really thirsty, dried out state, it pushes out more new growth for me. It's kind of like this plant wants to survive and it's grown. It's given me so many different offshoots. Like this is a new point. This right here is a new point. This is a new growth point. Here is a new growth point. Here's another new growth point. This is a new growth point. And this is all from just one strand. I've gotten one, two... I've gotten seven new growth points on this one strand alone, okay? So, obviously, always pay attention to your plants and see how it's doing in the location that you're that you're putting it in. See how it's reacting to the care that you're providing it. All of my compactors live in my northeast-facing window. I do live in New York, so it's northeast window in the northeast of the U.S. So, it's a lot of northeasterness happening. But, oh my god, this lash... Y'all, just fucking lash. Bro, just let me be great, man. Just let me be great. Just let me be great. My gosh. So, watering-wise, I water this plant maybe every... In the summertime, like, once a week. But now in the wintertime, I probably water it every two weeks. Um, it lives above my radiator. But the, the portion that it lives, I do not have the water to give it humidity but it lives in the window that my windows are open but it does not get any direct cold hitting it so these are all the tips that i can give in regards to this plant i can't give you any more than i already know for fertilizing if you want to you can use orchid fertilizer which is what i use to fertilize this i also on watering days if i like pre-mix a whole gap you know couple gallons of water i just add whatever fertilizer that's in the water already into this plant and that's okay all of the fertilizers that i use is safe to use on all of them like um like fish emulsion or my own aquarium water or osmocot or even liquid dirt i use all of those and i also use super thrive every single watering session since i've gotten this plant i use super thrive all the time i love super thrive i I vouch for Super Thrive. You should definitely add it in your water. But yeah, this plant is really easy, really non-fussy. You don't really lose foliage like that. Um, be careful of sunburn. You can get sunburned in the summertime if the sun is very, very strong, depending on where it's hitting. So do be mindful of that. But other than that, that is it's a really easy plant. So thank you so much, my salty pecans, for watching this video. If you liked it, please let me know by giving a thumbs up and sharing. Subscribe if you aren't already. Join this little cookie family because we're pretty awesome here. Become a salty pecan yourself. And don't forget to follow me on all my social medias. You can check me on Instagram at houseplant, H-A-U-Z-P-L-A-N-T. And here on YouTube, Pamela P. If you're watching, make sure you subscribe. And don't forget to hit the notification bell to be notified every single time I upload a new video. And I will see you in the next one. Let's get growing. Bye.